Well, Toto, we aren't in Kansas anymore. Unfortunately, we are back in cold Wisconsin. Fortunately, we didn't come back to like real cold winter taps. We came back to a little early spring warm up. Uh, so it was enough to kick the Fox River here in De Pere open. And we are out here right now getting ready to do some walleye fishing. This early, you're not gonna see a bunch of giant walleyes come in, but it's super fun to come out here and put a bunch of walleyes in the boat after a long winter staring at a graph and a six inch hole. So I'm out here with Max Wilson today. Uh, we're on his little bass boat right now. We'll kind of show you that here in a minute. But uh, Max has been out here a couple times just a few days ago already and caught hit. What, do you have a 90 fish day, Max? 105. 105 fish day. So most people probably in a lifetime won't have a 105 fish day. So uh, we'll see what happens today. Stay tuned. <laughs> Might be a carpal lunge. Dude. <laughs> I was trying to unsnag my freaking play bait. <laughs> no. Wrong species acquired. Did it come off? Oh, that's good. <laughs> Max is hooked up with a walleye. You're still throwing the blade, right? Yep. On the blade. Yep. There you go. There's a Walter. Target species acquired. Look at him. Good. Smoked it. Right in the face. Well, that's the first walleye I've seen out of the river this year. <laughs> that's one of the best cold, cold weather techniques right there. It's just blade bait these fish they're putting the feed bag on getting ready for that spawn and you know sometimes when they go uh, finesse you know when they don't really want to eat kind of got to force them to eat with something loud obnoxious in their face and you're just uh it's not so much a feeding bite it's more of a reactionary bite yep and we'll talk about that one a little bit later we'll go into detail about how you work these blades and we'll talk about some more cold water techniques just absolutely gorgeous male yep couple more weeks and they'll be a whole lot bigger and a whole lot heavier in here. So one of my favorite ways in the spring to catch walleye, especially when they go super finesse, uh, right now we're early in the season and uh, the water's still pretty cold. So a lot of times those fish's metabolism hasn't uh, fired up. They're really kind of sluggish. So some of the best ways to get when they, especially when they go finicky is uh, jigging a plastic. Either a jigging a plastic or just the old good old fashioned jigging a minnow. Those two are really, really good. The reason why I like it is because I can really control the cadence. I can control the fall. I can do a little, a little more aggressive snaps for when they, you know, are in a little bit of, more of a feeding pattern. Or I can just sit there and gently jig it in their face and really hold it in their face a little bit longer and get those fish to uh, trigger a, a bite a little bit better. Uh, one of the things to add to a jig, especially this time of year, is going to be a stinger hook. Because a lot of times, you know, we were talking about earlier with blade baits and stuff like that, they'll pin it on the bottom. It's the same thing with a jig and a minnow when you're vertical jigging. When it goes on the bottom like that, they'll pin it. And a lot of times, if they don't get the actual jig, you'll get them with the stinger hook if they're just nipping at it. And it'll help put a couple more fish in the boat for you. Well guys, first walleye of the year for me is hooked up. Boat flip. Chill out. I don't want trouble hooks in my hand. Oh, thank you. All right guys, first walleye of 2021 for me. Came on a blade bait. It's already milking. Look at that. All right buddy, go do your thing. Go make babies. Now when we're out here in cold water, like I said, there's there's three baits that typically tend to catch more fish than a lot of others. And one of those is definitely a blade bait. So a blade bait is gonna get bit a lot in cold water. And the key to a blade bait is to not overwork the bait. I see a lot of people that are out here casting a blade bait and they are ripping away at that rod like you would later on in the season when the water comes up a few degrees. But now when it's really cold and we just saw in the footage when we were fishing earlier, just really tiny baby hops. You're talking four to 12 inch hops and you're literally just doing enough to be able to feel that blade wobble and then settle back to the bottom and then wobble and settle back to the bottom. Now what happens then is that settles back to the bottom and the walleye goes to pin it. And when you set the hook, you'll tend to get them in the chin, side of the face, or hopefully in the mouth. Uh, again, you're gonna wanna use this anywhere from that 38 degree, 37 degree water, all the way up into about 42 or so. When those walleyes come up and they're ready to spawn, then you can start to really expand your arsenal and get away from those cold water baits. Uh, but as, as Max just said, a jig and a minnow or a plastic is phenomenal and a blade bait is gonna help you just the same. So one of the big things in cold water, guys, is covering water, right? Because you're, you're fishing at a time where fish are pretty lethargic, so you need to find active fish. So once you go along and you're doing your graphing and you're looking for fish, you wanna make a nice long cast. Now, one of the disadvantages to making too long of a cast is your hookup ratio is gonna be a lot less. So I like to use a 610 medium rod. 
Uh, it's got enough flex that when I hook that fish, the hooks are not gonna pull out, but it's got enough backbone that when I do stick them, they're gonna stay on for those long distance casts. So like I said before, it's just a real little hop, just enough to feel that blade just wobble once or twice. Real little hop, let it settle. You can count to one or two. I've learned that when you're first starting to do this stuff, like some of you may be, counting really helps. So you count through your cadence and eventually you'll naturally begin to do that. So just hop, one 1,000, two 1,000. Small hop, one 1,000, two 1,000. Now what typically happens is when you go to make that next hop, it's what's called a double clutch hook set. You're gonna go to make that next hop and then all of a sudden it's gonna get pinned to the bottom. So uh, like I said, a lot of times you're gonna follow hook fish. It just is what it is for the technique, but it's a great technique. Make sure you give it a try in cold water. You're gonna catch a lot more fish. One thing you'll notice guys, when I'm working this blade bait, you're not seeing me take big, huge rips like this. Basically I'm just popping it. You know, it's probably about a six inches to a foot, just enough to feel a few vibrations from that blade bait and then let it settle back to the bottom. Most often your bite's gonna come right there as it rests down to the bottom, like I was just gonna say. Basically your bait's gonna come to a rest and then they're gonna go down and they're gonna try to pin it to the bottom. They come up and they pop it. This is done. Yeah, this is a little guy. <laughs> tiny, tiny little male. But you can see guys, see where that hook is? See how it's in the bottom of his chin? That happens all the time doing this. They don't always get it in the mouth, but that's three fish on three casts. Got something going now at least. That's a good call. That's a good call. I wouldn't say that out loud. You judge you. You and Jason would get along great, but the rest of the world. <laughs> Last but not least, the trusty hair jig. Hair jigs have been used in fishing for decades upon decades. It's a very old school technique, but that doesn't mean that it does not work today. Now, as you'll note that Max said earlier about stinger hooks, I've got one tied directly to the hook on here. So the stinger is not gonna go anywhere. That stinger is gonna help you hook a lot more fish when they side swipe or they kind of miss it in this cold water. So a lot of times if you're fishing with a jig and all of a sudden you're getting bites, but you keep setting the hook and all you come back with is a jig, no minnow, you wanna add a stinger because you're gonna hook a lot of those fish that are swiping and missing. Um, when it comes to hair jigs, there's a lot of good colors out there, but generally when we're fishing out here in the Fox River, black and purples are very good. You can have muddy water out here and that dark color is gonna help those fish locate it. Um, the fire tiger type pattern, so that green, orange, yellow, and then also something like a pink and white is also going to be very good out here. So when it comes to a hair jig, you're fishing it very similar to a minnow or a jig in plastic. It's kind of that pop and swing. So that bait is gonna kind of come up and then it's gonna kind of just glide down to the bottom and come up and glide down to the bottom. And you can do so many different ways. You can do side drag, you can do twitch drag. There's a lot of different ways to fish it. Um, but that hair in the water is really the magic in this bait. And it's really what gets those walleyes fired up. So again, Another staple in cold water fishing for walleyes is a hair jig, just like that one. Look up, there's another walleye. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Max just tapped Logan's rod. He thought he had a buddy. He swung for the fences. I got him. <laughs> oh, that was great. That was a heck of a swing. <laughs> oh, Max just tricked Logan with the the old rod tap. Me? No. That's that's probably one of the bigger ones we got so far, besides that one female he had. The blade is on fire today, guys. All right, guys, we are gonna go ahead and wrap up the video today. Matt's over there doing crude things. <laughs> Max is over there doing crude things right now, trying to make me laugh. Uh, but I hope that you guys learned something from this video. Uh, we caught quite a few fish today, actually. It was a little bit slow at first, and then uh, Logan jumped on the boat. Maybe he was the good luck charm, and we started popping quite a few fish on the blades. And then Max decided to go sling some minnows, and <laughs> he took the easy way out and started popping a bunch of fish. But uh, I hope you guys liked the video. I hope you learned something in the video. So take some of those things you saw, Come out here on the river this spring, uh, catch some fish. And if you like this, go ahead and down and click the like button for me, subscribe, and also leave me a comment, and we'll see you on the next one.